Welcome back to another edition of the AFL Europe podcast and another segment of the Irish Down Under profile pieces. James Brosnan and Mike Corain joined by Lauren McGee, who debuted for Melbourne on the weekend. Lauren, congratulations, first of all, on the debut, and thanks very much for, for, for joining us. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, no, it was good to get my first game. Um, obviously, it was a disappointing um, game to be part of in the sense of like our first loss of the year, but another opportunity to go after and change things. But thanks, Emil, for having me on. Not a problem at all. How did you find the experience? I know it would have been a, a bit of a whirlwind for you, no doubt. How, how was the game and how did it sort of play out? When did you find out you were playing and then how was the rest yeah, of the week I, after that? Yeah, I found out. I only found out. I was like, I find, uh, found out properly on Thursday that um, I was playing. Um, kind of had an idea that I might be in, but it was kind of more so just to see if, just to really honest that like if I felt, if I didn't feel like I was ready or if the coaches still like didn't feel like I was ready they just wanted to see how I got on and train with the backs this week and stuff so and it was just kind of just to see so I still was like hopeful that I'd get a chance to play but I still kind of like didn't really know whether I was definitely playing so Thursday was the day and I found out which was obviously delighted and to get a chance especially I don't know I just like I've been going well in training but obviously match scenarios are so different and like not knowing the game and only being here for like just over a month and it's a bit much to be pushed put into it like obviously you just have to learn yeah no it was I think it was more like just um the interchange I think caught me like you know coming on and off obviously with Gaelic like you'd probably most of the time like you'd play a 60 minute match like plus like straight out so I think that was a bit more um, a bit different for me and then having to go through the gates and stuff like on the sideline I literally like Jesse like who's involved was like pulled I went to run on when Shani was only coming off and she reefed me back in because I hadn't a clue like um, so stuff like that um, but like obviously learning curves uh, but it was really good to be out there and I think like I was getting as the quarters went on like into the third quarter like I think I kind of settled a bit and um, I got it Got, I got a kick, which I wasn't expecting to get in the game. I thought I was just going to be hand passing it off, and um, for the whole game, if I ever got it, um, so I was going, I was happy with that. But um, no, it was really good to get a game in. So hopefully, um, I can just keep on working on like what I need to work on and bring my strengths to the team, and hopefully get a few more games in. Lauren, obviously, you mentioned it was a whirlwind, and it surely has been. Like you were. Among the yourself and Goldie and Eve were the last of the Irish players to head out. Um, probably the first week in January when you got out there, you two weeks in quarantine. You you guys missed the practice match. So you've literally probably had maybe three weeks with the group and with the team, and you're straight in at the deep end making your debut. And congratulations on that. Um, so definitely it, it was a big adjustment, I'd imagine, to be thrown straight into gameplay so quickly. And I hear what you're saying about the technicalities and the, the interchange gates and all that sort of stuff that's going to get a bit of getting used to. How have you found the three weeks um, since you've been on the track with the Demons and have you literally been trying to squeeze everything in? Yeah, no, it's been good. Um, no, it's definitely, like, as, as you said, like, it, it was kind of, like, it was unfortunate that we missed out. We didn't, we only, we missed out on the challenge game, but we also missed out on the intra game. They're, like, in-house, first in-house game. And then when we came, when we arrived on, like, this, so we arrived into Melbourne on the Friday and to be fair, like the team are so good, they changed the train into the Sunday so we could have an extra day just to kind of get settled. Um, and then it ended up being the day that was like 35 degrees heat or something and I was like dying anyway um, from that. But it was kind of like thrown into the deep end and then like, then I was on like the second team to practice like kind of set plays for the first uh, team and like I just had no clear what was going on I was in midfield and obviously with the midfield it's totally different to the way we play it in Ireland with like there's only two in midfield so I was like there's, it's so like and obviously when you're in midfield and you're standing on this side for the throw up like you're defending that goal whereas like around the centre bounce like I was here and then my player went straight down. I was like, oh God, I thought I was like goal side and stuff like that. So it was a bit, stuff like that was hard to get my head around. But no, it's been really good. And I think maybe being thrown in the deep end is good in a sense because you just have to get on with it and just like, and just learn the game quicker. And sometimes that's 
probably the best thing to be doing. Um, but yeah, it would have been nice to have like even just a challenge game. I, I've played, I've played a few, I played um, a game with the VFL, which was really beneficial for me, um, just to get like a game in. Um, but it still wasn't like you know what I mean. It's not. It still doesn't kind of do like what like it it is like it is to play AFLW justice um in that sense. But it was still good to get game time. But yeah, no, it would have been nice to have a few weeks prior um to the obviously the competition starting and get maybe a few challenge matches or like just a few different scenarios in. But um, I think I've adjusted well enough for how long I've been here. Absolutely, Lauren. I was going to ask sort of when you initially signed with Melbourne and all things going well, you probably would have been out there in November or early December potentially. So personally, how is your sort of, have you had to adjust your goals of what you initially expected of yourself as compared to what's happened being so limited in your preparation and your time to learn the game prior to getting thrown into the, thrown into the cauldron? I guess. Yeah, no, I definitely think, yeah, like it would have, like, I think, I think I still have big expectations of myself just as an athlete and um, to perform at my, my highest and whatever, like my role needs to be for the team. But in the sense, yeah, definitely for the likes of just like being like, I thought like I, my skills, were, like, cause obviously I done a few sessions with Mike and they were great. Cause I like had done a few, like, like a few, like obviously when I first was looking to do like when I first was being signed and stuff like that, I got a chance to come over to Melbourne last year and got a few set like got a few kicking sessions in, skill sessions and stuff. Um and then obviously hoping to go in November. Um but yeah, no, the the two like sorry, the two nearly three months not being there beforehand obviously gives you a disadvantage, especially when I haven't played the sport, I haven't played any game, any challenge. Literally, the most I had done was the combine um, in the terms of like um, with other girls um, and then obviously just skill sessions, a few skill sessions um, in Ireland. So, yeah, no, I think if I had of like thinking back and like thinking of November, I definitely had a higher expectation of like what I could bring. But I still, I still obviously as an athlete, I'd still want to push myself and want to become the best I can for this year. But I, I would have hoped to have a few uh, months prior to the season, not just not just a week, but um, you just have to kind of get on with it um, and just learn as you go. But it's been great. Like I actually, as I said, I don't think I expected just with the way it went. Like I was hoping to play and obviously every week you're not playing. You're, it's not like you don't, you obviously want to be playing, but like obviously that's, it was extra shock that I was able to play in the fourth round rather than a bit further down the line I was expecting a good bit down the line just in terms of like I've been playing well and training but just in terms of like not knowing the game as well as the other girls and stuff like that but now I was lucky enough to get in for the fourth round so I'm happy out and hopefully can continue um, to strengthen my game and bring something for the team and hopefully have a place for the rest of the season. You mentioned the combine Lauren we'll come back to that in a second and obviously um we got a few sessions with you in, in Dublin there um, in November, December before you headed out. But obviously the reason that you were um, so late in, in getting some sessions done and stuff is the phenomenal run you had with Dublin. Like So uh, you've just won your fourth All-Ireland with Dublin in a row. Um, absolutely phenomenal achievement um, for you and all the girls. Uh, what's it like to go from that level of success and focus on one sport to try and switch over then to a completely new sport? And in your case, like you're, you're probably the one of the two new players this year with the least experience the other pair to be signed was Breed and we got to do a lot of work with her across three or four months so you really had very little time to adjust and it wasn't just a case of like switching your mindset right that's the all-Ireland done I got to focus on AFLW now and get as much done as possible in, in the yeah. short time available yeah no it was like I like I, we met up for a few sessions and like they were kind of I they were even like within like the all Ireland period just like once or twice but like even that like it was just kind of like when find the balance and when to do those sessions because I was you have to be when you're playing for Dublin or when you're playing one sport it needs to be focus needs to be on that well I personally would just have a focus on that but again like closer came to closer came to Christmas and closer came to the all Ireland it was too hard to fit in anything um the likes of scale sessions and I was afraid I wasn't going to get them after Christmas because of 
obviously, hopefully, we were trying to be on a fly from from Stevens's day onwards, so the 26th, 27th. Um, so I obviously was like aware that I didn't want to be crossing over and like kind of upsetting my routine with Dublin and stuff. But I also was aware that I could be going literally on the 26th. And if I don't get a session or two in, I'll be even more behind when I reach Melbourne, especially having to quarantine for two weeks. So like I just kind of had to balance that. Um, and yeah, no, it was, it was the case as soon as like, obviously I, I, I did those two sessions with you prior to leaving and they honestly did like they made the, the, uh, so much different, like a big difference to me because I had done a bit of work like months and months before. But like as if you don't, if you're not practicing, you forget it easily enough, especially when it's not your the sport you grew up playing and the one that comes naturally to you. So they, if I didn't do them, I would have been, I think, even more behind um, when I came over here. So, um, but no, like it was more. Yeah, it was just kind of being able to like do those sessions but not think about it too much while being with Dublin and then when, once Dublin was done yeah it was literally like parking and trying to focus on and trying to get out with like the girls before we went over and get a few sessions in just to kind of get used to the ball again and and um, get our mindset for obviously quarantine for two weeks and then trying to do that and be ready for that but also be ready to then Hit the track literally when when we get to Melbourne. So, you know, it just had to be just kind of had to balance it and just switch over really quickly. When did the idea start for you to sort of looking into the AFLW? Was it when you were watching your your two Melbourne, uh, sorry, two Dublin teammates go about their stuff, and you thought I wouldn't mind being part of that, or was it a an invite to the combine out of the blue? What sort of got your your mind thinking towards the AFLW? I think I think like my mind was already kind of looking at it like just in general I was like always would have said I would be interested if I ever got an opportunity to pursue it and um, when like load like Cora when any of the girls went over it was like that's that's really cool and I think the more players that went over I was like oh god there's a good few going over like it'd be really cool to eventually hopefully go down that route and um, but yeah no definitely it had to been the girls going over and being introduced to it like Daphne was one where like I was like oh like there's two of my teammates going like that's like Daphne spiked in interest but yeah no it was I still didn't like know what way to go about it or like whether I should pursue it myself so I think being asked to go to the combine just made it that bit easier and to like actually go oh no this is definitely something I'd like to do and being asked to the combine and, and Thankfully, get having interest from like Todd um, from Melbourne straight away made it that that bit easier for me to decide. Okay, this is definitely something I'd like to pursue. And then obviously knowing that the girls were going to go over and play and have their like experience coming back. Do you know what I mean? Like them telling me how they got on, how the team was, etc. Um, was going to be a massive. I think. When I was thinking of it, was it definitely something that I was like wanting to know from their perspective what they taught overall, like living in Melbourne, obviously playing for Melbourne, stuff like that. So, yeah, no, I think it was a mix, but no, definitely, I think I wanted to, I wanted to pursue, but I never thought I would have gone for it, only for like that. My dad getting kind of uh, contacted about the combine and me just going, oh, yeah, definitely, I'd love to do that. So, Lauren, obviously, the combine, the first day of the Europe combine took place in UCD across the weekend, Saturday and a Sunday, with uh, 16 phenomenal athletes up there. Um, how did you find the experience of the combine itself and going through the physiological testing? Um, would you have felt confident going into the testing, um, the interview process, the games, the skills, the whole weekend? How did you find the, the whole experience? Yeah, no, I thought it was really fun. Um, and obviously being with other girls from other counties was really good. Like girls that I knew from different like experiences, like trips and stuff like that, or just playing against and then other girls that I had never met um, was obviously a really good thing. So you obviously meet with new people. Um, but yeah, no, it was, I like, I, I think I got two weeks notice. So I was a bit nervous with the testing and stuff. Like I was just a bit nervous with like fitness and stuff. Um, I know like, we did the yo-yo tests and I was kind of worried that we're going to do 2k and stuff like just for myself because obviously that was like I went with Dublin till September then club till October and I was completely off season 
going into that. So it was a bit daunting and I'd be real, like I'd want to perform and obviously do well and those type of tests. And so I was a bit nervous at that point, but I still thought I did enough. But no, overall, I thought it was run really well and it was really enjoyable. Um, I don't like, I wouldn't be nervous when it comes to like talk and like interviews and stuff in the sense of like, because I know it was really just based on who you were and like you as a person, your family and stuff and just talking openly, which I think is really a nice um, touch that the AFL combine do, that the AFLW combine do, that they want to get to know you as a person, not just your who you are, like, like the player you are. Um, so I think that was really a nice touch and I, I, I really admire that they, they do stuff like that. But no, it was a really enjoyable weekend. Um, and I, I think everyone who, who did it like really like got a lot out of it. So that was cool. Would have enjoyed saw, going to Australia to do it, but... <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah, slightly, slightly different to UCD in winter. But anyway, yeah, look, yeah. hopefully we, we'll have... We're working with some more girls at the moment now and looking towards the next season and the season after and possibly have some more combine slash talent ID events coming up. So... Uh, would you encourage anybody that that's thinking about it to just get out there, give it a go, go along to the events um, and try their best? Yeah, I think I, I think even if you have an, any sort of inkling or like any sort of interest, you should just do it in the sense like contact anyone, AFL Ireland, stuff like that. And um, just because like if you don't try it, you don't know. Like and just from the experience, like you're not going to be amazing like do you know what I mean at the scales or anything so like that type of stuff shouldn't ever like stop you from doing it or even if you go to the combine and you're like oh god this is a bit tougher and I'm not gra- gra- grasping the scales that like, you just need to just uh, accept that and that's going to happen like you're not going to just be oh I'm amazing at this this and this when you go to it just enjoy the process and just like take it all in and like actually look down the line and if I like if you do get a chance to play like those skills stuff will come so no I definitely I think like it'd be great like the lads one works really well so why not have a girls one when there's so much interest already from a lot of um Irish players and it's working at the moment with the amount of us over here so it'd be better like it's it'd be an easier platform for people to pursue it in that sense. So that's no, a really good way of um, like just the, the crossover and getting over. So no, yeah, it's really good. So definitely encourage anyone who has any interest to do it just to, to see. Absolutely. And well said, I think uh, there's plenty of clubs around Ireland as well, Mike, that would uh, love to have some more players, both men's and women's. Oh, definitely. Yeah. No problem. Uh, Get out for a kick. Just a uh, final one from me, Lauren. How quickly did it all sort of come together after that combine to sort of signing and, and committing to Melbourne, I guess? And was there sort of interest from other clubs or were you with your Dublin teammates We always set on going to the Demons? Um, I actually, I, when I went to it, I didn't really think of, I'd be like, oh, it'd be really good if I was, if, if Melbourne did like contact me and stuff. But I was really open-minded to just see what way it'd go and who'd be interested. And there was another club that were like chatting to me and um, but like like Melbourne took a really like strong lead on that they were interested. Um and Todd kept in contact. Like I met up with him literally on the Monday. He went for a kick with me and my dad, like he came to chemical croak stuff like like you know what I mean he came to my club team we had like a coffee, he had a hot chocolate and um, we like, you know, stuff like that. Like we just talk details, kind of what it would look like. And um, so it was really, I wasn't expecting that to be that fast. And from my experience, I just thought, oh, I'll do this and see if anyone has any interest and just go from there. And the fact that like he had an interest straight away. And obviously I know that it was from Dublin Links and wanting to keep that going. Um, but it was really like, I was really excited. And then, I broke my collarbone in like so we just kept in contact and kind of just chit-chatting and obviously him like, updating like when when there would be any or signings and when it would be and that type of stuff um and then when I broke my collarbone in February like he was like it'd be great if you could come over and just because you you're not playing and it gives you an opportunity to see Melbourne before you come over see the club and it was right before COVID so I didn't get to 
see the club like in detail but I still got I got a chance to do a kick kind of like from afar with like make the coach and stuff like that and that obviously was like a great experience for me alone to be able to do that and um, so it was really obviously positive in that sense but then COVID hit and I was still like I kind of was really positive that hopefully it will still go ahead but I still was realistic in the sense that loads businesses everything was like like shutting down there was loads of things not going too well in general in life that like I had to be very realistic that like it could not happen like especially a new player um being signed never played stuff like that so and then obviously the further not knowing when championship with, with Dublin was going to be and stuff like that so there was a lot of factors played in and I think he told me like I was training with Croaks uh, like uh, during like the summer and I think he had like rang me one week and was just kind of like just with everything going on it doesn't look likely that we'd be able to sign you and I was just kind of like yeah no worries obviously disappointed but obviously was realistic about it the whole way up and um, I just kind of was like I hopefully next year will be able I'll be able to sign like I'll work on blah 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 and hopefully then it'll it'll all turn around and then the week later he was trying to ring me on the Friday and I didn't answer I was like sure he's gonna tell me the same stuff like like like, like me and Todd got on really well but I was like coming home I was like maybe a Friday night I was like ah sure I'll talk to him another time and then he was like the next morning and I was like coming home for a train and he's like really keen to talk to you and I was like what what's wrong like and he's like we, we would like to sign you so I was wasn't expecting it especially the week before being told like that he didn't think it was possible so I just had it in my head parked for hopefully then to to pursue for the next year so just lucky to have had the, like really lucky that Melbourne still took it is a risk because they didn't know when we were coming over and then we ended up being the last over and a week before a match so like it was it's a big risk so I'm very grateful that they were still able to take that risk and sign me so they're, they're just an amazing club, so I'm very lucky with my experience. Or one of the, I suppose, benefits of the few switch flights and delayed flights and stuff is you got to spend Christmas at home, which most of the Irish girls didn't, and spend time with the family. And I know family is very important to you, and you've had a tough few months at the end of last year. Uh, obviously, we saw at the weekend um, Johnny and the siblings sending you a message there on the Melbourne website. Um, how, pr- how proud are the gang of you at home, and how important has the influence of Johnny, your dad, being on your sporting career so far? Ah, oh, yeah, no, it was great. They they were literally only told at like 9 or half 8 or 9 a.m. that morning that like they needed the video. And Todd, he was like, when do you need it? And Todd was like, now, like I'm going to the club to show it to her now, like you need to send it. And you can see my sister on the left, he was like 15, was definitely dragged out of bed like she was still asleep for the video, like. And um, so now that was great. That, that sent off emotions. I don't think just for me, but for a lot of us. So, but no, they're so proud and they're just, they're all of them. Like they're just, they're so a support system. Like, and no, definitely dad's been a big, um, he's always been someone I looked up to him and Darren watching them over the years. And then obviously pursuing anything. Um, they always encouraged me. Dad, like brought me to everywhere, everywhere in terms of matches, training, etc. And we didn't. I didn't even live with my dad. Like I lived in Dublin, like Southside, and he lived in Ashburn and Mead, and like would travel to collect me to then bring me elsewhere. So like he, I owe him a lot when it comes to football. But always allowed me just to express myself when I was younger. Never tried to be too involved because he knew I'd be too stubborn to listen. But I feel like oh, as I got older, I've allowed him to like I'm able to go to him and talk and um, tactics, see what he thinks, and be like realistic or not just oh you did you did great when like you haven't played well like it's you didn't play your best but this is what you could do you know stuff like that. So I'm very lucky to have someone who has the level of um knowledge when it comes to a game that he has. So. No, they're they're all great um, and tired without them, but I suppose I have never lived away from home in general. Um, so it's been hard not having them around, but we keep in, in contact most uh, most days. So that's been great. And obviously FaceTime and stuff is just is obviously we're very lucky to have that um as well. Just on that point, with TG Carr showing the game here for the first time ever, um, it's absolutely fantastic. 
Are you getting much feedback from the, your club mates, friends at home? Obviously, everyone's sitting on the couch on the start of the evening, able to watch the games and the highlight show on Monday night of all seven matches. We've never been so exposed to AFLW here in Ireland, which is fantastic for us. But I'm sure it's great for all you Irish players in, in Australia as well that it's now easier to watch the games and um, it's it's much more a topic of conversation at the minute and it's fantastic to see that level of support from TG Carr for women's sport. Yeah. Yeah, no, TG Car are great when it comes to anything to do with um ladies uh, sport and football and they're always amazing. But no, it's like like they're so good to be doing this. And like even my friends would watch a few matches, but yeah, no, it's definitely I think for their for knowledge of learning the sport, like especially for girls that are in like anyone that's into sport and um, they might like see a match and they'll just watch it for the sake of watching it, just kind of you know if you're playing and they're up and they'll, they'll watch it where the fact is that they can actually sit down and watch a match on a Saturday night and as the more you watch every week and the highlights on this say a Monday they just add to like your knowledge of the game learning the rules and then that adds to your enjoyment like you know the girls like we're even like my auntie was like I she's been living in Sydney for years and doesn't watch like never watched AFL and now she's like AFLW or anything and now she's like I'm really learning the, the rules, you know what I mean? And now I'm like enjoying it because I'm watching it so much. So it's it's that aspect. And obviously back home, it's great because there's no live sports other than like football and um, rugby and stuff. But like to have that extra and um, the girls are loving it. Like all oh, the girls are watching all the matches on a Saturday and um, sending posts being like, this is deadly. Um, no, but so it's a great support system. And for families and stuff to just watch it. Um, I know like not every match is on, but it is, it's it's amazing. Um, and then I like even just the AFLW website is amazing anyway, just for people to watch it back at home. But um no, it's 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 such a good, it's just such a good platform to have. And again, TJ Carr just showing how how much they support ladies uh, ladies football or ladies football and ladies sport in general. Just uh one last one from me, Lauren. I know I said that earlier, but have you earned yourself a new nickname? I think when I saw your name come up as a, a signee, I was like, surely this is going to happen. But apparently it has. Um, they, no, it, they they were trying to do Specky because of um, Specky <laughs> McGee. I actually have the book. Someone got me the book. <laughs> um, someone left it in my locker, still trying to give me the name Specky McGee, but it hasn't really <laughs> taken off. Um, they, I think a lot of people are just calling me McGee Um and stuff like that so I think McGee would my just my second name more so or Laws but there's a Laws in the team so I'm it's just kind of whatever they're feeling so at the moment we're not actually I'm not actually technically anything I think they're still working on it um, and I think Patsy said it was offensive that I didn't have a nickname um, but that's just not a thing unless you're your second name like is easy to make a nickname or you're like like there's a, several Laurens on the team. You generally like the likes of Neve, like is Macker, but there was other Neves on the team, and then Goldie, like there was three or four Sinead's on the Dublin team. Do you know that kind of way? And Goldrick is Goldie, like so it comes so naturally. So, but yeah, no, um, I think McGee. We'll just stick with they're just sticking with McGee at the moment or um Laws. So, but just I was like, whatever you want to call me, I don't mind. <laughs> call me Ginger. You can call me anything. I don't mind. Like. Um, so yeah, no, not 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 official nickname, but I'll let you know, and I definitely have <laughs> concrete so, one. So, so Specky isn't going to stick by the sounds. Of, look at you mentioned no, the girls I there. Thought, I, I thought they meant because like you, people with glasses, Mike called Specky. <laughs> <laughs> pair of glasses in my life and they were like then Todd obviously told me the story and I was like I was I was a bit shocked that they actually spell Specky McGee M-A-G-E because a lot of people spell McGee M-C-G-E-E so I was like that's really cool so, but it's a cool name but it's just not sticking at the moment I don't think the girls like it either so they're, just, <laughs> they're not they're not they're not picking it up fair enough look at just to, to close off for myself um you mentioned the girls we're looking forward to seeing you in action again, obviously, and hopefully to see you line up on the same team with Goldie and Marker. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh, whether it's next weekend or whenever it happens, uh, we look forward to seeing the three Dublin players on the Demons players and you guys going far into the season. You're looking very impressive. So hopefully we we'll see you all the way to finals time. And just well done on the debut at the weekend. Uh, that's a huge, huge milestone and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thanks so much. Yeah, hopefully we get, we get a few games in together.